welcome, welcome to a marvelous, beautiful, wonderful new episode of the world's best debating podcast ever. Sebastian, how are you doing? I thought when you said wonderful and beautiful, you were talking about me, but that's okay. I'll be for the next yes, episode. Yes, I, I started out talking about you, but then I felt weird and I decided to derail towards the podcast. Is that I better? See. Yeah, that's that's better. Yeah, I don't want to get into trouble a second time, you know, by admitting yeah. things I should not admit or so, revealing so, things. So but. welcome to our wonderful, beautiful host, Sebastian. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm flattered. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my new tactic at work. I, I try to flatter you and make you uh, nervous and, and giddy and then then you're failing at the debate. You know, flattering me will not work. Right, we disagree a lot at work. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, it seemed to be a bit of a habit of ours to disagree with each other. It's great that we turned that into almost a game. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> nice transition. You're getting better at this. Yes. I've lost. Uh, I've lost my mojo. Yeah, and uh, did I mention that disagreeing is a waste of time anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit more far-fetched. Do you want to elaborate? Why do you think disagreeing a waste is a waste of time? Is it because you're always right in the end? Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, and I, I honestly don't think disagreeing is a waste of time. So maybe I went too far, as you said. But uh, we can we can move on to our motion that explains the weird the weird transitions that I try to pull here. Uh, will you tell our listeners what our motion is today? Well, the motion is one you suggested. I'm curious what made you think about it. And the motion is computer games are a waste of time. That's it. That's simple. I think it's one of the very few debate motions which are which is only six words, seven words. Computer um, games are a waste of time. I have to admit that I never counted the words in our motions, but surely after we recorded this one, I will go to the dashboard and do that. Hey, we can even make it even shorter. Computer games are a time sink. Five <laughs> words. That's a different meaning, though. There's a difference between uh, between uh, losing time and wasting time. No, Dirk. I, 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 say, I say no. We promised each other. We made a vow to each other <laughs> two and a half years ago <laughs> to never debate on semantics. So You're breaking the original that vow. Yeah, and the original motion was computer games are a waste of time. That's the one I prepared. All right, all right, all right. That's the one I prepared too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I will go to the dashboard and see how many short debates we have. I encourage our listeners, in fact, to take a peek at the dashboard every once in a while too, because I noticed <laughs> that there, there's a worrying trend that we get less and less votes on the page. And we have to tell our listeners, this is the fuel that keeps us going, that people go to the, vo the, the web page and vote on our debates, right? What's the current status, by the way? Uh, I'm leading. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I have to ask the question again. How is that even possible? By how many? <laughs> I, uh, well, the dashboard says I won three debates so far, and I'm leading with 22 points, my friend. Huh. Yeah. No, it must be like some double voting, you know, like when people press the button, it's fat finger syndrome, you know, ah. they just keep pressing on the voting thing. Anyway, so um, it goes to say our listeners, um, please, 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 please don't forget every once in a while to give us this mighty click because we compare debate scores. Mm. And you could even listen to all the debates out of the archive and give us a voting there as well. There are a couple of debates actually that are still undecided that are waiting for your votes to come in. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I might even get more than those three in, in the lead. But how but can you say, so you got three debates more than me winning and 22 yeah. points. That means you got 22 more votes than I do? Yeah, so whenever a debate goes to one side, I count the number of votes to the score. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. have uh, in total it's 22 more points. <sighs> Every time I need to review these stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you should definitely do that. Audit, quality it's like, control. It's like a computer game all over, right? It's a waste of time, so maybe you shouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, but this is vital. This is my pride. <laughs> I don't like losing. I never lose, in fact. All right, let's talk about computer games. I'll be for the motion. I'm going to defend that it is a big waste of time. And I'll be the first one to go with my two minutes. Okay, let's do this. 
Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. I will have to admit that I used to play video games. I still play games, and I actually enjoy playing them. Anything from Wolfenstein 3D to Super Mario World or Civilization, for those who remember that in the 90s, to things like Tetris or Counter-Strike or Fortnite more recently. Yes, I had and have fun, but generally I'm spending way too much time on them and thus wasting my time. A little bit of it is okay to rest one's mind, but they're too addictive and make us lose our focus on more important things. I'll also admit there are some intelligent, in quotes, computer games, things that can actually teach you something, such as improving your chess skills, or perhaps playing collaborative, collaboratively as part of a team. However, I would claim that most people do not play those semi-intellectual games, but rather spend their time on all the other dumb games. Fortnite is a masterpiece in that sense. When it comes to create a very addictive game, by creating a very rich and free gameplay to actually handing out prize money. And here, this is how you can see it can be very addictive. So let's operate a distinction here. I'm not saying all games are stupid. I'm saying computer games are a waste of time. Board games at least force you to be in the vicinity of other people. There are many things you potentially learn from being around other human beings, interpreting facial cues, forming bonds, etc., etc. So go out in the real life. Get out from being locked in your room in front of a computer screen for hours and hours throughout the night. And if you're a gamer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Time could be better spent reading books, as an example. You know, these books, you know, those things with words printed inside them and that you have to spend hours reading, pondering, thinking about. There's about 123 million books, different unique books, um, published since Gutenberg, invented the printing press. Granted, most are not interesting or useful, but even if there is only a thousand books to read, most people would not have enough of one lifetime to read them all. But whether it's books or something else, it's about deciding how to spend your 24 hours in a day that you have like everyone else. Why would you spend your evenings on games when you could start that business, write that book, or start building your personal brand? So overall, computer games are just a waste of time. Dirk argues against the motion. Today, I defend my natural stance. Surprise, surprise, Sebastian. Um, it's not just the flip of the coin speaking. It's my true position. And my true position is, if you have time on your hands, then it is a perfectly legitimate choice to play computer games. I mean, you, you play a little bit the snob here by making like a ranking of good and bad time wasters. So books being better use of your time than, than computer games. But they are both inside, indoors, and they are both, well, telling you a story if you, if you play the right computer game. So I'm not sure if I follow. But anyway, this is not the strand of an argument that I want to follow just here. There are a ton of studies and some demonize while others praise computer games. But if you st uh, take all of these studies and you do a combined studies, there are a couple of findings that emerge out of all of them. And some researchers recently did just that. So number one, computer gamers show improvements in several types of attention, including sustained attention, selective attention. So there are regions of the brain that literally are trained when you play computer games. So if you d um, define not wasting your time as doing something useful, you could argue that tra uh, training your brain with computer games is something useful. And even the simplest games have that effect. Other things you can uh, discover is that Computer gamers um, have an easier time staying focused for longer times. They have an easier time uh, doing um, complicated cognitive tasks. And if you play 3D games like the ones that you mentioned, uh, Fortnite, for instance, you even improve your ability to orient yourself. So that is argument number one. It's not a waste of time to train your brain and therefore computer games are not a waste of time either. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. Absolutely, it is a legitimate choice to engage into playing computer games. I am absolutely not neglecting that aspect, but it's beyond the point. The point is not whether you have the choice or not. You have the choice to waste your time or not. Uh, but there's no uh, argument about whether you can play video games or not. I'm not saying it's not an option. You mentioned, I'm trying to... I. You mentioned the dichotomy between evil and good, as if I was, uh, as if I were doing that dichotomy. Uh, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just 
objectively trying to give you arguments as to why I think there are other things which provide maybe better skills. You mentioned books would limit you to be indoors, uh, but that's not entirely true. Uh, you can take your book and actually even re- it even actually paper books even work in direct sunlight. You don't even need uh, a tablet or a re-reader or anything. It just works. So no battery required for that. And it's not just about books, by the way. I'm not trying to be an intellectual snob. It could be as simple as just you know walking through a scenic trail. It could be you know going cycling, you know drawing comics, training for a triathlon, whatever it is. Really, there's tons of things that you could do besides playing computer games. Uh, I want to cover two additional things and one more heartbreaking story. Uh, skills may be improved. Uh, I'm not gonna. I did not look into the studies. Uh, you're most certainly correct. I, I trust you did your your due diligence there, uh, your research. But here's the thing: what I observe in practice, even if you have improved your skills, you're not putting them into practice. When was the last time we heard of? And I'm going to exaggerate here, but of a Nobel Prize winner who managed to win the Nobel Prize because they had spent hours and hours playing video games whether in their teenage life or adult life or at night in between doing some physics research. I don't think it really happens. The problem is this addiction issue. Right? You may develop these skills, but they're not actually used in practice. And that leads me to the other point, which I want to insist upon, moderation. Uh, yes, ideally, things should be done in moderation. In practice, what happens? Look what happened. The first time I had a video console, the Super Nintendo, in 1991, on 1990, I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning because we were not allowed to play late at night. But we were not restricted to wake up early in the morning to play video games. So I was just obsessed with it. And that continued. Every time I could have access to a computer, even you know with the authorization or not of my parents, I would play video games. And here's the thing. It's just like alcohol, just like tobacco, just like gambling. It's addictive. You never want to stop. Good stuff or enjoyable stuff or entertaining stuff It's just something you just want to keep munching on all the time. And it stops you from socializing, from studying, from improving other skills. And that's the issue. And that's the problem with addiction. And computer games are extremely addictive. It's very difficult to be addicted to a board game. Uh, I've never heard, I may may be ignorant here, but I've never heard of anyone being addicted to Monopoly uh, or Scrabble. Um, I'm, I'm half joking here, but I actually have not. Playing all day, all night long is a waste of time. And I read to do my, my little research here. I actually read the entire story. I think it was on Quora.com of a father recently divorced of, uh, with children and showed how the introduction of video games in the family life was one factor, not the only factor. He was very humble. I really loved the way he wrote about it and completely broke up the family ties and how everyone was addicted to video, video games. I encourage everyone to look it up uh, on Quora.com. It was a very interesting account and heartbreaking, actually. So I think, yes, computer games are a waste of time because we are unable to moderate ourselves. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. We certainly agree, Sebastian. There is an addiction for pretty much everything. There are people, I'm sure there are people addicted to board games as well. There are people addicted to sports. There are people addicted uh, to, to sudden thrills. There are people addicted to certain types of food. So whenever you're addicted to something, whenever you do it too much, it's bad for you. But thankfully, our debate is not about whether or not computer gaming is bad for you. The question is, is it a waste of time? And a waste of time implies that the time should be spent otherwise and that the time goes without positive effect. And that's not true. Computer games, first off, can tell a story just like music, movies, and other recreational activities. And you mentioned the book several times. Yes, you can read your book outside. Do you know that books used to be blamed for all sorts of negative consequences? And back in the day when they were introduced, they were there, there were claims that books are bad for the youth and people are not going outside anymore. It's bad for social life. People were saying the same things about books that you just said about games. And it's not true for books and it's not true for computer games either because there is not the one computer game. So if you do puzzle type games, you train your brain. If you do games that you play together, and I can tell you having kids, my kids play games almost always together with others. In fact, my youngest is not permanently living with us and my kids play together with him on a regular basis and they have a Skype session on the side. They joke together. It's almost a social gathering of sorts. And playing together is a social experience. 
And it's a fun one. It's something rewarding. It's something useful. It's something that adds to their day. If they would sit in front of a TV as a replacement for computer gaming, I wouldn't be uh, convinced that this is a better use of time. And right now they they choose to use their screen time in front of a computer game and that's fine by me because guess what? They're not doing it 24-7. They are not sacrificing their friends and, and school careers for doing it because they are not addicted. Being addicted is not the norm, Sebastian. And... Therefore, the question comes down to, are computer games a, a good use of time? And I would say, as the culture good that they are, as one of many options that you have, they are just as good as playing chess would be, or going for a run would be, or any other form of recreation you could pick. Yes, when done in moderation, as everything on this planet. Final Statements Sebastian goes first. Three things in conclusion. Number one, not all games are stupid. Not all games are a waste of time. I'm insisting on the ones which are computer games. And it turns out, unfortunately, the most popular games nowadays, the most popular computer games, are the dumb ones. They're not chess games. They're not games to improve your puzzle, puzzle skills. Secondly, Addiction to reading is not as harmful as addiction to alcohol or video games. So I don't think we can compare one with the other. And I'm sure you're a great parent, Dirk. No irony here, no sarcasm in what I'm saying here. The thing is, most parents are not uh, overseeing what their children are doing. Most parents do not have that luxury because, I don't know, they don't have maybe the same background that we have. They're not as privileged as we both are. And therefore, the children are left to their own devices, literally speaking, to their computer devices or consoles, and they spend their time on video games instead of being at school or studying or enhancing skills. And that's my third point. I'm not saying one should not or cannot play video games. I'm just saying that all these skills that you mentioned can be, that which can be developed with computer games can also be developed through tons of other activities. And in fact, I contend, I claim you would actually improve them even more if you were not playing video games at all at all although i would agree moderation is fine but i don't think that's that's the chimera i think that's the nice wish that actually does not happen in practice so unfortunately computer games are a waste of time in practice Dirk. we agree one thing computer games require time investment so you have to use time to play computer games but the positive effects outweigh the negative effects, given that you're not addicted to it. So it's good for memory, good for concentration, good for focus, good for social life, depending on what game you play. But there are plenty of games. And there's a reason why most games, most complex games these days are essentially social games that allow others to play together. So computer games are just one choice among many. It's a cultural good and saying it's a waste of time implies that it's a bad use of your time and that's just not true. Definitely not more true than for things like watching TV, just hanging out somewhere, not doing anything on the couch. And uh, for all the positive effects, I would say you should even consider doing it if you're not playing already. <laughs> So what led you to suggest that motion? I heard people talking pretty arrogantly about uh, people wasting their time using, uh, on computer games instead of doing something productive with their time. And I feel especially those who do that more often, um, often I have to say people that are um, a few years older, so not exactly the generation computer games, but the generation before that, I get the impression they have just no idea what computer games really are and uh, it it to me the argument sounds indeed very very similar to what i said earlier arguments that ha that basically have been made for tv and before that for radio and before that for books but which basically is always a new invention is the end of everything and if you look at it as i may try to make as, a, as an argument if you look at it i think it's more balanced than that surely there are ways to waste your time with whatever recreation activity you pick I mean, it's like you can waste your time with anything, but that implies that there is 
good and bad use of things in your time. And I'm not sure if that is really that easy to make as an assessment. What do you think? Um, well, as, as, I, as I always try to do in our debates, everything I say, I do think is valid. It doesn't mean it's my, my final position, but now I'm confused. So like always, <laughs> no, the point is, it's this moderation thing. I agree with it. The thing is, I think like, I, I'll, I say the same thing, right? In practice, I think in reality, people are just unable to stop themselves. And I'm not talking about you or your children or myself, right? Because we have whatever, like we're lucky to have interesting jobs and, you know, we're maybe balanced in our minds. I, I unfortunately don't think the rest of the world is as privileged in terms of stability, financial stability, educational background. Hmm. Uh, I don't know, even may maybe some people mental stability. So I think if you add all these compounding factors, it makes a world where as soon as, as soon as you introduce any type of addiction, and I agree with you, it's not just video games, but I would not put reading books on newspapers as in the same category. I think there's a, a spectrum, right? Maybe alcohol is way worse or drugs is way worse than video games uh, on average, right? In terms of addiction and reading would be maybe the lowest. Right, and if you add these addiction factors, it just makes it just blows up. It just makes things even worse. Like you just stay holed up in your in your room instead of going to work, or you don't show up to work or to school. And But I think this is—I really think this is the reality. And I don't—I think we're blind to it because I I can only read it. Right, I don't know yeah. people around me in that situation, obviously. But I—that's what I get from how I interpret the facts and what I'm reading in the news. That's all. You basically say maybe we are blind to it because also we live in our bubble, right? So I live in a bubble where my kids are going to a higher school and uh, re, um, have good grades and have friends that go to the same school and they and their friends share the fact that the parents have decent jobs and are well educated and there is like a whole selection of things they can pick and choose from what to do in their spare time. So this is basically the bubble we live in. Um, I. The question I have in my mind, though, if you make the argument that um, games kind of draw people in and then are a time sink, isn't that more a property of electronic media in general? Would you make a difference between somebody staring at a screen doing things and uh, maybe you should go down outside? No, I, I, I'm not an expert on the topic, but I don't. I, I would, by my gut feeling, would say it's not the same thing. And I would, if I try to put rational arguments, I would say. On YouTube, you're passive. You're consuming content. I'm not saying it's, it's good or bad, by the way. I'm not trying to put a, a notion of bad and, and, and good in this. In this, uh, what I'm saying is just you're passive. In a video game, you're active. And if you look at, and I was surprised that it was mentioned because I, I disagree with that notion. But I, again, not an expert. But the shooting in Christchurch, New Zealand. I don't know if you read that piece of news. The guy was an active player of Fortnite. It was mentioned in the news as if trying to make a connection between video games, which has been repeatedly made over the past few decades. Yeah. That, you know, playing video, violent video games can lead to violence in the street. Now, I'm not an expert. I haven't done the psychological analysis. I'm a bit doubtful of it. I think it can trigger for some extreme minds, maybe. My point is there's an, there's an active element, right? In, in some video games or most video games, you have to do something. So I think there is... There's a difference there. And I have to admit, Fortnite, among other games, is beautifully designed, not just from the from the layout, just from the game dynamics, right? It's short uh, uh, game periods of time. You, you respawn very quickly. It's a massive multiplayer game. You have 100 people at the same time on the map. So it's all, it's all beautifully done, very, very cleverly made, precisely to make it addictive. But it's not, it's not with an evil intention, right? The intention of a game designer is to get the player to stay on your platform. The thing is, if you can never get off it, and I've 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 seen it with myself. Right? When I play, when I'm intensely focusing on something, whether it's a game or something else, I don't get off of it. I'm like a complete drug to the thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think there's a difference between different types of screens. Like if it's an if it's an e-reader and you're reading books, what's the worst thing can happen? Like <laughs> like you fall asleep on your e-reader. But, but imagine an e-reader that um, that is more active and can present you at any given time precisely what keeps you continue to read, right? Uh, the, the fact of the matter is right now, if you read books, books are pretty dumb. They don't know what you want to read right now. But in, um, there, are, there are scenarios where people are envisioning a type of e-reader that dynamically adds to your reading experience by by recognizing what you might be interested in as a next step so um removing that friction that may pull you off the platform to the maybe, point that you were making go ahead to the point go you ahead. were making um 
Yes, whenever there's a shooting, somebody uh, comes up with, oh, this guy played this and that game. By now, um, shooting games are so common that I would say you're more a psychopath if you never tried a shooting game than the other way around. And if everybody who ever played Fortnite or, uh, I don't know, Doom or whatnot would be a, a, a shooter, then we, we would live in a different world. So the, this is... I. I I honestly completely dismiss, the, uh, dismiss that argument, but maybe we should have a debate over this that uh, may be interesting. There's the, one, there's one uh, sorry to interrupt, but there's one uh, wrinkle to that in that in this case, he actually recorded himself with a uh, GoPro or equivalent on his, on his head. It looked exactly like Counter-Strike or these kind of games or Fortnite. Like you see the gun and shooting up people. So in this case, I actually, I think there's a small wrinkle, right? I, maybe in his deranged mind, there was an assimilation between his fascist theories, white supremacy theories, and a video game. Or, or as an alternative interpretation, he designed this for virality. Yes. So he, he tried, and right, I mean, it comes down to the mission that he assigned himself to and that he wrote down in the manifesto. He wanted to send a message far and wide Clearly, he succeeded. By the way, I agree with the media this decision not to spread this kind of content because I do think it plays into the cards of people like him to help with that virality. Possibly, um, I don't know. But that's I don't like being restricted. I'm, I we had a number of debates on that, but it's it's true that I I as an individual, I'm not saying as a society, as an individual, I really dislike it when I I feel like oh you should not have access to something. It's just a minute ago you say oh if i'm sitting there and passively consuming youtube that's a time waster or more of a time waster than doing something active uh, playing game i wonder who is who is giving us that ranking because if you use exactly the same time if you if you would say oh i spent my i spent five hours on youtube watching ted videos compared to five hours playing fortnite what is now the better use of time right it's it's is TED videos or Fortnite the better use of time? It becomes more blurry. And so in our debate, it felt like uh, I I had a hard harder time than I expected to really pin it down to something that is is crisp enough to have. A, no, a good I think it's I think it's fine because indeed, even though I'm de I'm denying it, I think I am making a a moral judgment in, in attributing a ranking and you're, and, you're, and you're pushing back against that and then it's for our listeners to decide. Maybe for some listeners, I, I doubt it, but let's, let's, hope, let's, let's assume it could be possible, but some listeners could think, oh yeah, actually this is true, right? Like maybe indeed I am wasting my time or indeed there should be a ranking of things that for my kids or for myself, I should think more about. So I think it's perfectly fine. I think we just, we were in a different on a, on a different uh, angle of attack, but that was logical because I, I, I cannot, I mean, that's why I started off by saying, I'm a, I'm a gamer. I used to yeah. play games. I cannot just, you know, completely, it will make most no sense just to completely bash I mean, it I mean, with no, to, sorry? Yeah, um, I mean, to, to blur the lines even more, I can bring the example of my, my middle son. He's, he's composing music. So he spends a lot of hours on his computer with Cubase, basically arranging sounds and uh, it, it's amazing what he comes up with in a sense this is just like a computer game so he's he's sitting there he's following the rules of that program he produces something he spends his time focusing on it looks very colorful as well by the way and for him it's addictive to have this outcome afterwards he gets reward by everybody being crazy excited over the music and it's amazing but I personally, I as a parent, of course, I attach a judgment to this. If I would see him the, spending the same time playing Fortnite, I would at some point say, hey, come on, now it's enough. Go out, play with your friends, do something else, take a break. But if I open the door and I see him uh, working on his music, I'm not disturbing him because he's doing something creative with the computer. But in, so, in a sense, it's the same thing, or not that different at least. Well, well, I guess the, the the effect of playing video games on skills is more indirect. So it's so difficult to see how it can lead and help with production and creativity. In the first yeah. example you have with music, there's production, right? there is creation. And I would ask you the question, if your son was spending 10,000 hours on that music production software, as opposed to playing 10,000 hours on video games, what do you think the outcome will be? 
In the first case, I mean, it's a rhetorical question, but the first case, very likely he would be a music composer for films, he could be a DJ. In the second instance, apart from being a professional gamer, which is probably extremely competitive as much as the Olympics, which means he has virtually no chance of, of, of making it through and making a living out of it, that's, that's my litmus test. What if you spend 10,000 hours of it, like the, 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 so, the well-known or supposed well-known notion to master a skill, right? You need to spend 10,000 hours of, on a specific software or an instrument or something to be able to have that skill. I contend, I, I think your son will, will get that enhanced skill on the first place, but not in the second with the video games. That was an Honestly, extremely I mean, I compelling know. argument, by the way. Okay. If you would have had that in the debate, uh, you would have killed me because I'm not going to cut it out. You probably will kill me because you have it now in the discussion. <laughs> anyway, anyway, shall we wrap up? Let's wrap up. Our dear listeners, remember to vote because I'm behind my lovely, beautiful, wonderful co-host uh, who seems to be thrashing me uh, in the number of debates he has won so far. So please, please go and vote. But seriously, vote on for the motion or against, but whatever convinced you the most. Uh, and try to stick to the arguments in the debate, not to the side discussions. Uh, <laughs> just for the sake of the game. All right, that's it. We're going to record another one, so stay tuned. You'll have another episode in your inboxes on 2debate.eu in just a week. Anything else to add, my dear friend? Thank you so much. It was a uh -huh. pleasure as always. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.